our next speaker is Mr. Simon Bozas. He's a partner of Genghis Grill and a founding partner of Fast Casual Expert LLC. He has over 14 years of experience and has extensive background in equity, debt, mergers, acquisitions, and much more. So please give him a round of applause. And can we have Ms. Sandhya Auntie and come and give him a bouquet? Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate it. Thank you. Well, first of all, thank you for the invitation, Srini and the Telugu uh, Entrepreneur Association. I really appreciate that. Um, very hard to follow after uh, Lalit. Of everything he said, he's kind of stole my wind because I was going to say what he said at the beginning. So, thank you, Lalit. Appreciate that. A um, little bit of a background. Uh, actually, I grew up. Uh, I know I have the whole gringo look, but I'm actually a foreigner, like everybody seems to be in this room. I'm from South America, Buenos Aires, Argentina. And I think that there's something very in common about every foreigner I meet in this country, which is the entrepreneurship. I think that um, everybody has it in them. The, the cubicle conversation I, that you've speech, I just like have flashbacks because I had my own. Like, no, he just took my line. Um, and so I think that uh, I think that that was a that was a big one. And, and to give a background, I grew up in South America, and and I went through a rigorous uh, program. Of, this, Argentina tends to follow soccer pretty seriously. I don't know if you guys know that or not. And uh, it's very vicious at 12 years old. So went through that system, and then always did a financing kind of a, on the side. And I want to bring up the word on the side because. It was something that allowed me to do what I was doing, but on the other end, make a little bit of more uh, income, even at a young age. Uh, through that rigorous program, I was lucky to graduate from high school, but did not attend any university after that. Uh, went to another country to play soccer, which is Bolivia, another South America. And then at one point, I realized if I'd be any good, I wouldn't continue to do that. Tough program to be in, and so I decided to come to the United States. I had my citizenship, and then I got into finance right away because that's what I'd done as I was growing up. Got into auto finance, into real estate finance, and then before you knew it, I was working for the corporation, you know, eat, eat, eat every day, just grinding it out and making it happen until um, I always had the idea to say, I'm going to do my own business, do my own business. But the responsibilities grew, right? The house, the kid, the car, the parents, et cetera, et cetera. And so this kind of does, uh, and, I, and I bring that up, and not in a negative way, actually it's very positive, but it brings a mental entrapment that I think it's very important that entrepreneurs have to be able to push aside to follow the passion. That's another elite line, you know, you took it from me, thank you, but I'll repeat it again. Passion is, I'm gonna say 120% of everything I learned in life. And uh, that being said, uh, 2008, if you're in the financial world, I guess we all know what happened in this country. And, and so therefore there was a pause in my career and I just started analyzing what I was doing and I decided I was not gonna do it anymore. And so pretty much at that point, uh, started doing my own thing out of passion. My own thing was debt, financing, equity, and meeting successful entrepreneurs. And the one thing that I noticed about all the successful ones was passion. That was the number one thing that stood out. Um, always dealt with uh, financing and capital, and that's my passion. Uh, but I also, I think that the food and beverage industry uh, is a, it's a very exciting industry. And if it's done the right way, it's really exciting. Um, and I bring that up because today my perspective is not going to be one of a passionate food and beverage culinary restaurant guy. It's going to be of an investor type of guy that likes that industry and put the two together to make a, a little different niche. Um, as I, as I continue the career path, after a couple of years, I got into banking again, but now directly not in real estate, but directly financing uh, entrepreneurs. But at similarly, uh, and I know what he brought up, uh, Lalit, about uh, not part-timing, but sometimes because of these obligations, it's understandable that people may have to continue to, to sustain their household. So in the spare time, I decided to build my own business. So while I was working still in the cubicle, I started parallel my company on the other side of just helping people obtain debt financing or whatnot, and I was running into a tremendous amount of people in the food and beverage industry. One of those became my partner. I met him. He was a successful operator. He was the Lalit, uh, and I call him the American version of it, and he was doing really good and really successful. But when doing the business plan as a banker, I was analyzing risk, and since I don't have the passion to operate, I was just looking at the risk of capital. And this partner brought something really interesting, which is what I'm here to talk about today, which is 
our business plan only focuses on food and beverage inside of captive audience. So what that means is your airport, your mall, your college campus, your casino. And that's the focus that I have. Uh, and it's a little different because I and my partner, we don't get to go pick our concept. What we do is we work with these organizations and these companies and these uh, casinos and airport, and we ask them what their need is, and we backfill the need. Does that make sense what I'm saying here a little bit? So therefore, they tell them we're going to need a burger joint. And so we go out and we find a burger franchise. And when you're going through that process, you start learning about all the opportunities that there is in the burger niche kind of market. And there's, you know, everybody knows the big names, but then there's a tier two name and then there's tier three names. And, and depending on the, on, the, um, on the situation that you find yourself in, in this particular uh, aspect of the business, we were looking for award-winning brands, uh, uh, great brands, but at the same time that I already steered away from the top two or three in that genre. You start learning too that there's people like Lalit that have created four, five, six, seven different restaurants and that you can partner up and not necessarily potentially do a franchise, but you can do a license agreement, which is something that a lot of people don't talk about, which is you don't have to follow the rigorous rules so much as a franchise. So that's something that after for a Q&A, if anybody wants to talk about, they'll be more than happy to do so. It's a different kind of arrangement than your typical franchise, which everybody's kind of aware of. Um, that being said, we continue to grow with my partner and look for opportunities, and we found it. So we opened up in DFW um, Airport. We had the opportunity to open up a Tex-Mex kind of uh, concept that's in Terminal E today. Uh, very, very successful. Uh, the problem was then the capital and financing. And then a lot of times, capital and financing is available uh, through, through people, but it's always good to have people with passion. And so the reason why I'm standing here today is because I found somebody who could help support us and be a good partner, which is, we already talked about him, which is Mr. Al Bakta, which was a friend and at the time understands the industry very well. And we obtain our equity debt financing partnership, if you want to call it, through their group, which they were very open to because they understand the market and they're able to, to, to realize that that's an opportunity. Um, that being said... Today, just want to talk about, you know, and, and I'm kind of wrapping it up because, again, Lily kind of took the wind out of my cell here with the whole story. Um, but really what I want to talk about is that the opportunity of financing and debt financing, which he talked about, is, is always going to be, I shouldn't say always, it is available. Uh, obtaining people to want to participate in the food and beverage industry is available. And I'll be more than happy to talk to anybody about that post, you know, uh, uh, here, the Q&A. But really, I think that the, the conversation to have is about the passion. So it doesn't have to be in the food and beverage. There's opportunities to grow the passion in any industry. Uh, we just happen, I'm, I'm a clear example of that. I am not ever going to be at the restaurant uh, um, operating La I don't. I don't have that ability, I don't have that talent, and I think that you do what you're big enough to do. But I do find to help the operations of the business from the growth perspective of capital. So that was kind of my niche and the business plan of doing. So now we're working with casinos and we're working with another college campus to continue to grow that uh, model. Since then, we've become a franchisee of Smash Burger. Uh, we have become a, a license agreement, not franchisee. This is the difference of the two, and we'll talk about it uh, offline, whoever wants to, with a concept in Dallas called Blue Mesa Taco Tequila and what that means. I think people have gone probably to a Blue Mesa Grill, and we kind of modified it and created a Blue Mesa Taco Tequila, which is on Terminal E. Uh, and then also, too, we have a local concept called America's Taco Shop. It's out of Phoenix. License agreement has only about five, six restaurants, but they were not big enough to have a full franchise agreement. And today, I'm proud to say that we finally signed the IHOP franchise, and we will be the first IHOP inside of an airport, past security. There's one in Atlanta pre-security, we'll be the first one post-security. And we also signed another concept, a license agreement, not a franchise, and again, I'll, I'll explain the difference between the two offline and the benefits that each one have and don't have. Um, for a concept called Bond Shop, which is created by Yum Brands, which if you don't know who they are, they're the largest restaurant group in the world. Um, that being said, that's just a little bit of what I want to talk about today. Uh, the opportunities that there is, that if you do not have the passion to be the next elite, that there's other ways in the food and beverage industry through the franchising programs that you can still participate if you like that industry and you want to learn about that industry that you can either potentially invest or grow with or partner up with adequate partners that are in that industry. Uh, the, the, the next Lalit that you know, is looking for has a need that you can do other services for or at the current job you have or whatever industry you look for. Um, the another thing that the, the passion of the, my company was to obtain debt financing and equity for companies that have passion operators. We continue to do that. I also have my partner here 
uh, Amron that came to talk to anybody post that that they would like to see what options are out there for to follow any passion if there's passion I want to talk to you guys about it and then show you what I've done and then what you guys can do okay thank you